Okay, so in this tutorial, we're gonna look at a really fast technique for creating percussive patterns that's gonna add a bunch of groove and movement to your techno bass lines. So if you find you're using rumble bass and things like that and you want a bit more movement, this tip is definitely for you. We're gonna be working inside of Ableton's session view for this one. And the tip that I'm about to show you is number 13 out of 50 in our brand new ebook that we've just released called 50 Tips for Killer Techno Tracks. I've added the link for you in the description. It's completely free. It obviously contains 50 techniques, hence the, the name that we've got. But I've also included a bunch of video tutorials for you, audio interviews with top producers like Dubfire. I sat down with Habishman sharing their tips and tricks. And I've added a bunch of software recommendations for your secret weapons for techno production so grab yourself a copy of the ebook let's get cracking now with a tutorial i've already written an example for us that's got that kind of rumbly bass going on it's got atmosphere tops and so on so let's have a listen to this before we get started a nice driving loop here and what I'm going to be doing is using one of Live's built-in drum racks that's got a bunch of percussion in it to get us going and underway. Now if you go into Live's library and search percussion you'll find a few different ones to choose from or of course you can just build your own by chucking a bunch of goodness in there. Everything is fair game even synth stabs, rim shots, the full works. So this is what the kit actually sounds like. It's got some nice tonal drums in there, nice hand drums, but obviously it's playing quite high up in terms of frequency. It's not really baseline material. So we're going to deal with that in a second by pitching down the entire drum rack. First of all, I just want to draw in a MIDI clip. And we're going to go for a quarter of a bar in length. This is a 16th note grid. And you're literally just going to come in and draw in these three notes. So I'm leaving one off the first quarter bar because it's where the kick plays. I want the kick to really punch through. Now what we're going to do is pitch that down. So before I start playing it to work out where I want the final pitch to end up, I'm going to add the transpose of every single one of these simplers to a macro so I can take the entire kit and pitch it down really, really easily. So in order to do this, go into the controls on simpler, right click on the transpose and map it to one of your spare macros. Then whilst you're here, right click again and go for map to all siblings. So now what it's done is it's mapped that transpose from every simpler on every drum pad. If we just click on another one to show you. And they're all on macro nine transpose. So that means I can pitch the entire kit down. So let's give this a whirl. feels a bit more driving. Now, of course, you can come in and you can get into each of the individual hits in here and match it to the key of your track if you've got harmonic and melodic material. Right now, we're just going to push forward and start creating some patterns. And the way I'm going to do it is introducing the gods of chaos and random into our process, which I absolutely love when I'm building any music at all. And very simply, you're going to go in and search for the random device. So this is just a MIDI effect. Somehow managed to plop that on the wrong track. There we go. So it goes before your drum rack like so. And here's how it works. The chance parameter is the chance that when a MIDI note is received is going to play something other than the note that you've programmed in. So right now if I ramp this up 85% of the time it's going to play a different hit in the kit than this low conga that we were just listening to. And which hit it's going to play, it has a choice of, at the moment, 12. So any of the 
12 hits or pads above it could get triggered here. Now, just looking at this, it's going to miss a few at the top, but these are shakers, tambourines, and so on, so they're not very bassy. I'm not saying we're not going to use sounds like that to add a little bit of life to this, but let's keep it on these lower tonal hits for now. So now let's have a listen to what we get. So a bunch of random nonsense. I've taken the claps out because I think they may be a little bit distracting for you at the moment. What I'm going to do is tame this. So I'm going to do it by recording those MIDI notes and then searching through to find a pattern that I like. So I'll duplicate the percussion track, get rid of this clip because I don't need it. I'm going to actually arm this one for recording. And in the MIDI from... I want to pick that initial percussion track. So it's this guy here. I'm going to turn off the random on this one because I'm not going to need it. The random is coming from here. So let's just recap. This clip is going to play. It feeds into the random device that makes it do all of this kind of crazy stuff. Let's just get rid of that for a second. And it's going to keep doing that relentlessly. The pattern that it creates is going to get recorded over here. So let's record arm, and you can see this in action. And that'll do us. So we can shut this one up now. And we can actually start looking for some stuff that's a bit more predictable and starts to make sense rhythmically and musically. I'm going to loop this up over a half bar. And I'm also going to change the grid size. Command 2 will make the grid bigger. I think it's probably Control 2 on a PC. So I'm going to have this set to quarter notes. And then I'm literally... And that should be a half bar, sorry. I'm literally just going to cycle this around until we find something that sounds kind of cool and goes with the groove. That's kind of nice. I like that. Let's just bring the volume down a touch. I don't have to settle with that. Just simply duplicate and go again. At the moment we can hear i think it's this guy at the top here yeah now obviously that's a bit overkill but we can always come in and edit this what happens if it plays there it's not bad but it's still not my cup of tea that's pretty cool so what happens if we take this Yeah, I like that. That's working well. Let's go for one more. That works pretty good. Let's just try something a little bit funkier. I like that as well. I think we can bring the volume up on this one. So let's see which ones work best now we bring the claps back in. Maybe bring that down. Not bad. Not bad at all. I'd probably go a little bit longer, but for the sake of the tutorial, let's just stick with one of these because we can enhance this a little bit further. Now, keep in mind, because it's in the drum rack, you can alter the mix here, you can extract change, you can change note lengths, there's all sorts of good stuff you can do. 
But in order to um, keep things moving, let's add an additional hit into this using some of these top sounds now and see if we can find something that cycles over quite nicely in at the top end as well. So I'm going to go for, maybe just put it there. pretty cool let's go in and add a bit of processing now so I've got an amp plug in here to add a bit of grit to this take out some of that low end it's a bit obtrusive and maybe yeah, let's put some delay in there. And we can, of course, come in here, turn this down a bit in terms of velocity. That's working for me. And bring our clap back in. Last thing, quick bit of side chain on here. And that's pumping nicely. Now, I'm thinking about this. I've just heard all that delay going on across the entire low end. And whilst it's working, I'm wondering if we might not be better off just taking out all of the bassy stuff here. That's nice. Now we're cooking on gas. Let's have a listen. Got that nice hypnotic feel. And of course, we can duplicate this out, start adding a few extra notes to keep things interesting. But that's that extra rolling movement that I really wanted in the low end. So I hope you found that useful and that that's worked for you. I've added some tips on how to expand this idea as well inside of the ebook. So remember, this is tip number 13 out of 50. There's a bunch more techniques on bass lines, drum programming, effects, atmospheres, lead sounds, you name it. It's all in there with the software recommendations interviews with some great techno producers the legend himself dubfire habish man we've got our very own rising star who's killing it marry as well from the finish more music community so grab yourself a copy it's completely free the link is in the description it's techno.finishmoremusic.com so easy to remember hope you found that useful until next time take care